Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> we didn't ever think you'd leave Ole Miss. It does take four years, Jolene. I got a job today, writing for the Jackson Journal. Great. You can write my obituary. Charlotte Phelan, dead. Her daughter, still single. I love the, the risks your character takes. Like, you know, because both of you are going against something because, you know, you want to get your message out there. You want to become a journalist. Can you equate that to a moment in your real life where you took a risk knowing that, you know, people were saying it's dangerous, you shouldn't do this, but you knew in your heart it was a good thing to do? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're talking to two actors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Risking poverty and isolation and <laughs> being ostracized. And Lifelong people, loneliness. Yes, and people <laughs> telling you you suck. And yeah. yeah. So absolutely, the moment I said, I'm going to be an actor coming from Central Falls, Rhode Island, living in poverty and saying, I want to be an actor. I want to be on Broadway. And people going, <laughs> how do you get? How do you jump over that, that? That you know? How do you jump over that and like and, and push yourself even though people are saying no, you can't do this. You have to believe it. You have to see it. And all you need is one person, just one, who believes in you, teaches you how to master a skill, validates you, and just likes you. That's it. You have that. You have it all. And for you, what was your? Did you have any hurdles you had to jump over? I mean, obviously, you're. you're you know, this is, huge success you're having mm -hmm. right now with, this, with these, this, this year in general. It's a big year for you. It's, I, I, any, any, her, I mean, I, I, there were moments of, of, of moving, you know, to Los Angeles or, 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 you know, not, not being in school with my peers anymore or, you know, having a, having a different viewpoint, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> than maybe my friends did. There's, you know, there's always, there's always moments, yeah. there's always hurdles, there's always, I would be dead without hurdles. I love hurdles. I love that feeling of not that I crave it, but it's important. <laughs> right. It's important. And those those years of rejection or those times oh, that it doesn't yeah. work out the way that you really mm. wanted it to, those are just like That's when you grow from It's hurdles. a chance to be a phoenix. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Mm -hmm. Everybody needs a chance absolutely. to be a phoenix. Does this dress look I made? I reckon when you finish it won't. Thank you. She looked like the winning horse at the Kentucky Derby. I have drafted the Home Health Sanitation Initiative. The what? A bill that requires every white home to have a separate bathroom for the help. Maybe we should just build you a bathroom outside, Haley. For me, what sets aside a good villain, in my opinion, is the relentless nature and that we never feel that you're going to break and become a good person. You're just right. an awful, awful human being in the yeah. film. And you know, talk about like playing that character. Is there times when you're acting the part out where you kind of wanted to be nice, but I mean, and you're almost afraid to be that mean? Yeah. Well, there's there were definitely a few scenes that I did that um, while I was doing this scene, I was really, I mean, uncomfortable right. is not the right word. Right. I mean, I just wanted to extricate myself from the circumstances mm -hmm. because uh, it was so painful to, to have to be there and observe the cruelty that, that this character was inflicting upon another. Um, but there were other scenes that were really fun because yeah. she's so, um, I mean, this, this character that I play, Hilly Holbrook, is so misguided that at times it's even, it seems absurd. Of course, to a modern day audience, I mean, it's actually very authentic to to how some people actually did operate, and particularly in that um, part of the country in the early 1960s. Not everyone. Right, I right, right. I don't want right. to make any generalizations right. at all, you know, but um, but it was, you know, crazy that, that when I was actually doing the research, and I'm like, man, there were, there were Hilly Holbrooks, you know, yeah. there definitely were, and I need to play her as true to that as possible. Wait, would you ever, I mean, would you ever apologize after a take, like, because you were being so mean to somebody? Like, I, I would want to be like, I'm so sorry right, I just said that. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, I mean, the, some of the more intense scenes, um, it was just, it, it had gone so to a place of being um, tragic mm. that it was like, okay, you know, after the scene, you just have to kind of, like, walk away and just kind of be a little quiet and then... Um, and then, you know, obviously we all know that we love each other and that we're not the characters that we're playing and right. all that kind of stuff. So, um, so you know, it, it wasn't necessary for me to be like, oh, sorry, but um, you kind of, while you're actually shooting for those particular scenes, you need to kind of stay in a certain space. And if in between takes we were like, I was like, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, right. then it would be, people would be like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. You know, and like the energy would break. Yes, and thank you. We wouldn't be able to return to that kind of mm. um intensity that it had previously had. Minnie? Hey, Abilene. Hey, Minnie. 
Mm-hmm. These women raise white children. We love them, and they love us, but they can't even use the toilets in our houses. Minnie, are you in there? You are fired! I gotta say, it's an honor to sit across from both of you. I love, love the West Wing, Thank and you. you're responsible for most of my childhood nightmares. So it's scary. <laughs> I mean, it's, Let me gosh. take this opportunity to apologize. Yeah, I spent many nights like, like in my brother's bags. Like, like I gotta this. sleep. Yeah, it's scary. <laughs> I mean, you guys were very young when this when this time period occurred, obviously. I mean, Thank you. Were, Thank you're you the first that. person. Yeah. Well, you were like four or five, and you were like, what, 12 or 13 right. when this happened. I was not that long. Wait, well, I, I don't know. I was trying to research it. No, but. Uh, no, you're right. I, I was know. like two. I was like, how do I word this without being offensive at all? Well, that was very yeah. sweet. I was at an age where I was completely and totally wrapped up in myself and, and right. not really aware of what was going on in the outside world. Well, that's my question, though. I mean, like, do you, I mean, obviously, since you were young, do you remember any of this hatred? This, this, I mean, it was so. I mean, you know, I don't. I don't remember any of that. I wasn't exposed to. It. I grew up in Ohio. I was born in Boston. Grew up in Ohio, and I didn't until I went to school and started studying it and realizing what uh, you know what was our not too you know uh, distant past. Right. And was just it's, it's an awful blot in our history. And it's amazing how we can be. I'm sorry. I, I don't remember hatred, but I remember segregation mm. and I remember integration. You said to write about what disturbs me, particularly if it bothers no one else. I'd like to write something from the point of view of the help. I want to interview you. No maid is ever going to tell you the truth. That's a hell of a risk to take in Jackson, Mississippi. Courage isn't just about being brave. It's about overcoming fear and daring to do what is right for your fellow man. What changed your mind? God. And Miss Haley Holbrook. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Thanks for the compliments. I wish all that was on camera, but I don't think yeah, it was. Yeah, we were just saying how cute he is. I like this. See? This is good. <laughs> this is good. I like this. Uh, I my favorite scenes in the movie were, were, were both of your scenes, like and out, you know, it was just an amazing experience to watch you guys out there, especially because your character is kind of like ignorant to the racism. Like you, mm -hmm. you're very, very like yeah, it's carefree and it, it's very fun to watch those scenes. And you know, for me, you know, when you watch this movie, it, it's just amazing that the hatred that occurred back then. And when when you guys do your research for these roles, I mean, like, it, are you shocked to see that life was really this way? Um, I I'm not really shocked about anything because. Uh, I don't know, I, I think it's important that we review our history so that we, we don't repeat it. Mm -hmm. And there's so much going on in the world today that um, sort of mirrors that, maybe not in the intensity, uh, but I think we can learn from it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I, I would not say that I was I'm surprised at all about that um, because people actually probably didn't know that they were, you know, yeah. intensely, you know, hateful. Right. What I love so much about this film is uh, I think it's a whole generation of people that didn't really know much about the civil rights are going to see it and kind of go, oh my God, that wasn't that long ago right. that this was going on. And then hopefully it'll open their mind to think, well, how far have we come? And um, what, is there another group in society that perhaps might be discriminated against? Yeah. Uh, so I like that aspect. Change your thoughts and you I'm gonna help with your stories. We all are. Y'all brought me into this, but I'm gonna finish it. Have you lost your mind? No, ma'am, but you about to. It's quite scandalous. It sounds like Jackson, if you ask me. Uh, well, first of all, I, and I was just mentioning, I saw you last night that, that you performed the song from the movie. It was one of the most emotional experiences I've ever had. And mm -hmm. talk about when, when you actually sang that song last night. I mean, I, you looked so emotional and, and, and so into it. And I, that's probably the most emotional thing I've ever seen from an artist. Like, how do you feel when you're singing song and obviously about this film? It's such a beautiful experience. Well, I mean, the film is, the song is not just about the film. Right. The film is me being, my life being relative to the film. I am a survivor, just like Abilene is a survivor. I am the living proof that you can come out positive after a negative situation, you know, and it's hard to forgive, you know, the people that hurt you the most, but once you do, it frees you. So I, I had to put myself in Abilene's shoes and, 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 and become her to write the song. But it wasn't hard because you know, it's her life was relative to mine, especially when she did the right thing, and especially when she had the voice to speak out about her own situations mm -hmm. in her, you know, life as a maid that made other women want to do it as well. 
and it made all all the maids want to want to speak out as well, and and that's what helped her to write the book, and that's what helped me to write my songs. So that's why I was e it's easy to draw from you know for you to see the emotion right. <laughs> because it's real. It's gonna be a tough fight. It's gonna be some lonely nights, but I'm ready to carry on. Particular experience, uh, uh, experience in your life because I know that you know her experience and she's going against, she's risking her life here, telling right. these stories, and because she knows in her heart that it's the right thing to do. But people right. around her are saying it's dangerous. Don't do this. You can get yourself in trouble. Is there a particular experience in your life where you went against what everyone else said and went with your heart and did something that you knew was right? Well, it's not even that I went against what other people said. I went, I went against what I was fearing. I was fearing on the My Life album talking about my problems, mm -hmm. you know, but I was like, I don't, I don't have the choice. So when I don't know where else to put this, I was fearing going on the Oprah Winfrey show and telling them, them I was, um, you know, hurt the way I was hurt, you know, and, you know, as a child, but I had to, you know, so I had to do what the spirit told me to do, which, which is what helps people at the end of the day. You know, I never even went to someone and said, you think I should do this? I'm always fighting with myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, you know, I went against everything that I thought would have held me back. And those are the things that set me free. Mm -hmm. I opened up, you know, me, for me to be here still. Shine the light, your to shine your truth. You tell Abelene. Do I have plans for her? You are godless woman. You guys are both great criers in this film. I, I love the crying scenes, and your scene in Doubt still blows me away every single every time I watch it. I mean, well, thank it's, you. it's just one of the best crying scenes of all time. Thank you. Um, what is the key to a great cry scene? Like, what, what is like, what, what, what are you thinking about? Like, how, how do you get yourself to get to that level where you can just let it all out on camera? I don't know. That's hard to answer. It is it's hard to like, answer. It's like, like what do you th like? How do you get? Well, to that your jumping level? off point, I feel like, can't be. I'm crying, gonna cry. cry. Right That's now. what I'm saying. You know? It's got. You gotta feel. I mean, I've, there's been so many cry scenes I've done or takes of scenes right. that were in the movie where I didn't cry at all. I mm -hmm. it just didn't come. Yeah, exactly. But um, you know, I you always as a character put yourself. You're in the situation. Right. You're actually there. So you just imagine, you know, if you were playing a woman and all of a sudden this young girl that you've been with her entire life and she's basically your child mm -hmm. and basically the life that you've known, you're being torn from it, just how it does it affect you. Right. And whatever comes out, comes out. So if tears and boogers come out, that's what comes out. If yeah. nothing comes out and maybe a scream or whatever comes, that's what you're gonna see. We gone done in now. <laughs> <laughs>